I'm more hopeful today than the day that Patricia and I opened the front door behind me and crossed the horseshoe to Osborne for the first time, the 1st of August, 2008. Friends, the world we know today is not one that I could fully foresee on the 1st of August, 2008, yet that's how long it's been, marking my 10th anniversary, as everyone knows, a small meaning, a small moment for the university with a lot of meaning for me. No one can expect the good fortune to serve in any position for 10 years. It's a significant amount of time in a person's professional career, let alone a college president serving in turbulent times. But as important a milestone as that is for me, it's more importantly a reminder about the ways we've stood strong and resilient through the many challenges and storms to create an even greater university from the great one that Patricia and I found here 10 years ago. Patricia and I would like to thank all members of the Carolina community who've helped guide our university on this incredible 10-year journey. And we want to tell you today, first I'd like Patricia to join me if that's possible. We'd like to tell you today that we intend to move on to a new chapter of our lives next summer, after 11 years in this office on July 31, 2019. There's never a perfect time for an announcement like this, and let me tell you, when Hurricane Florence canceled the State of the University on September 12th, I more than once wondered whether that was a sign that this announcement was not meant to be. More pertinently, perhaps, there's never a perfect time for a, for a decision like this. Our progress is continuing. There's much work to be done. We have high energy, and we love our work. So then why? The reasons, friends and colleagues, are both personal and professional. On the personal side, we simply don't have the time to spend with family and friends that we always expected to have at this age and time of our lives. We now have six and four-year-old granddaughters, and we've missed celebrating many of their birthdays and holidays with them. Patricia and I have one parent left between us, and opportunities to visit her are limited. An evening or weekend with friends or even attending the wedding of a friend's child usually comes down to months of planning or a difficult decision to miss a university event. I think you can understand that. On the professional side, Carolina is sailing ahead. There's realistic hope for agreement with state government, as I said earlier, about a path to more secure funding. And we're introducing a new budget model at the university, one that I'm excited about, but also one that will take several years to fine tune and adapt to. USC is in a strong position now to recruit an able leader who has all the right stuff to take the reins and hopefully to accelerate our progress. Still, this has been a tough decision for Patricia and me. Now is not the time to fully reflect on our time here, but I want to share a few observations and feelings of gratitude for you, our beloved Carolina community. We gave a lot to this community. In fact, we gave all we could, all we had. But if I might say, we also kept all that we gave, and I think you understand that. Everyone knows that it's better to give than to receive. It's also true that you get more than you give, and we are living proof of that. Pat Patricia and I saw that each and every day of the presidency. Each and every day, the sacrifices we made were replenished with joy and satisfaction. Sorry. No, I can't look at her. I'll look straight this way. <laughs> Our fatigue was lifted by the thank yous and pats on the back for, from so many alumni. Our travels to so many places on Gamecock One 
were rewarded by friends and donors who gave more in many cases than we were even prepared to ask for. After an athletic contest, when we took our sweaty garments off, our thoughts lingered on being cheered and buoyed by the fans, always hopeful, always loyal, in victory and in defeat, whether at williams Bryce, Stone Stadium, One Wood Farms, or at a Final Four. We were rewarded by the support of our trustees, even in the face of difficult decisions that confronted the realities of shifting winds and attitudes about higher ed. Our trustees are masterful in helping navigate the pulls and pushes of competing needs and interests, in-state, out-of-state, low tuition heights, higher, raising tuition or not having resources with which to excel. Uh, the needs of the Columbia campus, the needs of all campuses in the system. I was bolstered so many times and even rescued by my executive leadership team in Osborne and the system chancellors as they bore my daily burdens, helping us come up with fair and creative solutions to the challenges that were simultaneously crushing many other universities and continue to do so. And we were embraced and cared for unconditionally by those who saw us at our best and our worst, our house staff, gardeners, food and flower preparers, grounds crew and maintenance workers, the pilots, special events and law enforcement professionals who made the house, the campus, and even both of us look good yeah. and arrive on time. <laughs> whether we actually knew all that, was, all that was really going on or not. But there's little doubt that the greatest rewards came from the students. There's nothing more powerful, nothing more motivating than a conversation, a high five, a selfie, or a thank you from a Gamecock student. And of those, we drank freely from a never empty cup. Serving our students here, undergraduate and graduate students here and throughout the system, watching them graduate has been the privilege of my lifetime. As I said earlier, but I love this number, there have been about 100,000 students who, uh, who entered the alumni ranks since we arrived, and that's about one-third of all living USC alumni. Every one of them educated and sent off to succeed like our very own children. Last Thursday, Patricia and I were at Charlotte Douglas Airport and a young woman came over and introduced herself as a recent alumna. We took a selfie for old time's sake and she tweeted it, so now I know her name is Mandy Sims. I guess there will be a lot of for old time's sakes things in our future and I guess everything will feel different. Who knows, maybe I'll walk up to people wearing Gamecock clothing at airports and ask them for a selfie. <laughs> but we'll walk unafraid into the future, knowing that we've received enough blessings for a lifetime during our time here as professor, dean, vice president, and president and first lady. No doubt there'll be ample time for celebrating and reminiscing as we approach the summer of 2019. And by the way, we don't plan to go far, and after a break, we may even find new ways to serve the university. But in the meantime, and finally, and in the words of Robert Frost, I have promises to keep, miles, before, miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. Thank you everyone for being with us here today, forever, to thee. Thank you very much.